Welcome, anime lately fans. How you guys doing? Len GDF as always. Sam the Manga Man, and we're here to do a anime movie review, and it is a silent voice or a shape, the shape of voice. Yes, and so we're gonna give a full review of this movie right now. Spoilers, event. Hey, so other than that, guys, comment down below your thoughts about this movie. Tell us if you like this movie by liking the video, subscribe most importantly, and comment below if you want us to review any other anime movie, DC movie, anything like this for giving you guys content when, when we don't have anime to record to put it on for you guys content when um, random days. Other than that guys, let's get straight to our review. Okay, first, this is technically your first official time watching this movie. Yes, because the first time I watched it, I watched half of it because uh, my dumbass used to have a habit of coming late to stuff. And late to events, yeah. so I missed almost one third of the movie mm -hmm. when we first saw it. So I didn't really had that connection to the gravitas of the movie, the scenes, the why this person is feels so bad of how he bullied her when she was younger. I didn't really understood that. Mm -hmm. um, our old co-host Ty, he really was mad, and he's like, "How do you understand this bitch treated her so bad?" I was like, well, "I don't see that bad." Like, well, you do only see the full movie. Now I saw the full movie. Now I fully understand. This bitch really did treat her bad. Like, really. Oh, I mean, it's not just her. I mean, it's also the main oh, yeah, character. Oh, yeah. The show you too. Show goes. Yeah, it's all the other kids and classmates as well. But he really started because he felt like some type of, not jealous, but he felt some type of envy way. And not envy, but more of anger because every time, because she, she's not changing to try to understand people. Instead, she's just apologizing. But he can't change for her trying to understand how she's going through. So she just pretty much picks on her because everybody else can't seem to understand her or she she can't understand them. Like they're, yeah. they're both not working each other. It's a two-way street. You have to be able to work with each other in that sort of way. But you got to understand, they're kids. Yeah. They don't usually know any better. They are harsh. Kids are mean. Yeah, kids are mean, and, guys. Like really brutal. And we've seen that in the beginning of the movie when Sh uh, Shoko like really gave it to us. Uh, to the uh, yeah, uh, sorry, to the girl, the main character, and she, Shoka, Shoka, and she just took it, literally just apologized for everything. Every single time, wanted to make amends, wanted to be friends. She just wanted to make friends. I could understand because I had a bad habit when I was younger when I made mistakes saying I know. Yeah, I was my bad habit when I was a kid because I'm um, if my mom was ever on the camera, or anything, my father, or my brother. Um, if they're ever on the camera, they could say, I was a stubborn kid, I was a crybaby, I was a person that was always a follower, never a leader. I was a person who always say I know, but never apologize or never say what was my mistake. So I could relate to what this movie was. And guys, I did almost cry twice. I'm not heartless, so I did have emotions to this movie. This time, I almost cried twice for this movie. So I was really truly understood where Sam came because this is the first movie you actually fully cry. Yeah, I cried in this movie. Like, yeah. Damn, it took me hard. Yeah, because, for me, I almost yeah. got there. Yeah, because this movie you can relate to for almost anybody because I know it's movie is not. It seems like it's about bullying and about uh, picking on things. And but it's learning. not. It's actually about forgiveness and to be learned that everything will be okay. And also, there's a message, guys. It's not about yesterday. It's about tomorrow. You can always start today. To be a new person for a new change and that's what i love about it the whole message throughout the movie of him like trying to find for him to find a change in himself and also change in others where every character found a change in themselves not now later or or even by the end of the movie mm -hmm. where where the bitch that i hated the most forgot her name but the one that's um in new yorko i think new yorko, yeah yeah in yorko um she, i hated her the most but it's because she is so blunt so Mean? Me, but like me, I'm a blunt person, but I say in a sarcastic, jokey way where it doesn't sound so blunt and harsh. Mm -hmm. She said it without no filter. So the way she said it makes me feel like, damn, yo, bitch, tone it down, tone it down, please. And by the end of the movie, she showed a bit of sign language. She said it she's, harsh. She's starting to change a little bit. Like and that's what it showed. And, and for show Yoko, she was like, oh, sign language, you learn. She like, huh? Harsh. And that was very beautiful. She like, and she walk away. And she never does that. She felt embarrassed. So showing that a person from the beginning of the movie, no matter how much she tried to change, she never did. By the end, she finally did. And that's a beautiful message that it's never too late to change no matter what was your past. Mm -hmm. The past is the past. You can't change that. Yeah, I agree. Tomorrow you can. The future you can. Because we are the future for tomorrow. 
Alright, that's good. So how did you feel about the whole angle shots and the whole music and sometimes most pictures have to go like cover the face where you can't see? When I first face. remember the movie, the in the theater when I first saw it last year, I hated that part. But seeing it from the far, from the start to now, from the beginning to end, I love it. Because I truly understand why he sees himself down to the floor and don't look at people straight to the face. Mm -hmm. And I understand that now with the visual style, with the showing with the whole X, with the whole transition, the camera style, and the whole animation style showing of how people are nervous, the way people mm -hmm. start and showing the anxiety attacks. I have only had one anxiety attack in my life and that's because I had a um, problem with my ex and finding out that it was not my baby. So I truly understood that. So, no, no, I'm, I'm just saying like the anxiety attack, I truly understand how um, show the yeah. main character, the guy, where he felt the anxiety attacks twice, right? Yeah, but this is from his own social anxiety kind yeah. of way, where he's not used to looking at people in the face and he's not good with people in general. So, this is what came in. Like, he's feeling nausea, he's feeling sick, he just feels nervous. Yeah. And it happens a lot for social anxiety kind of people who have social anxiety. And that makes and, sense because social anxiety is very common to people, exactly. where people don't know how to communicate with others or know how to go away from the past. So I find it very beautiful how, instead of explaining it, mm. the director did visually style, and that was very beautiful. Yeah, great. So what do you think about the music and the score? The music the score is very good. Um, I find the score much better than the music itself. Mm -hmm. The score is very impactful and very main key for what the scenes were very impactful and were meant for. Like One of my favorite scores was actually when uh, Chayoko, the girl main character, sister, was trying to tell the dude um, that she's okay but she's not really okay because her grandma just died. Mm -hmm. But at the end, she said, I'm really scared. But the whole music really made it feel with her tears, her her trying to be happy and all that. So it really made, really made it feel special mm -hmm. with, the, with the score. The music to me wasn't that great, but it's because I really connected to it. Mm -hmm. But the score was really soothing. But like for the music, especially for the piano, you saw that each part when they have no words and lyrics, but you hear the whole piano going high notes. Oh yeah, and it was shocking. Kind like of I'm notes. saying, the score was very beautiful because the piano, that was very main key for it. Yeah, because this is a way in a movie where you don't have lyrics, you don't have, I'm sorry, you don't have words, and you're not, show, you're just showing slides of what's going on, but and just the music in the background. Speaking about words, the Susanna, which I was cool with, but. Next time, director, maybe with, with translation the for translation the for the subtitles for the sign language itself. Like, I would like to know what they're saying, why they're saying it. Now, I get, like, wait a couple minutes and get the translation by the other people with the duel. So, I really love it. Oh, speaking about the visuals, I love how my also the scene I love is with the butterfly, with the mm -hmm. two with the two daughters when the grandma died. That bu butterfly symbolism was really beautiful and really great transition for them okay great i also want to add like want to tell you a little bit more information i've told you before this the voice actors who did both for uh, shoka uh, shoka the girl are actually both uh, they're deaf they yeah literally are the voice actors that is beautiful to actually get a real it's to actually have a cast, a real cast like a real. cast somebody that's actually deaf for dub and sub that's really beautiful and very beautiful to give people with some type of disability jobs like that, it gives them actual work and actual storytelling that could actually be done in 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 our line of work. Mm -hmm. For you to actually find a good story and give people that type of job, it's very well done. Actually, one last thing I want to say, how would you feel about a person with a disability, not just with deaf or like, or, but like also with blindness or other stuff like that, would you treat them like differently and not like how they should be like treated like everyone else? I'll treat them the same because I'm speaking of my mindset now, who I am today. I'll treat them the same, but I'll treat them also trying to get to know them and also see them as a human. Because at the end of the day, they're human like us. They're not. They're not monsters. They're not anything like that. Agree. Um, I can't say who. I can't say how I would treat them back in my day because um, back in my day, I don't know who or how would I treat that person. But honestly, at the end of the day, we're all humans. We all have flaws. We all have good benefits or not. So at the end of the day, we just have to treat others the way we want to be treated. Agreed, because these, they're, they're still people too. It's just they have their own they have their own way of struggling to learn, to help change themselves, to be able to cooperate with other people and learn. It's just, it's their own disability, but there's, but yeah, they have their own goals, they have their own obstacles, and they have to learn from their own stuff to change. 
and you sh they shouldn't be people that you give extra special attention to and you treat them like almost like pets in that sort of way yeah so it's which understandable is true like you sh they, sh they, sh they don't need the whole babying special attention well speaking about the pets we just said before we go i really want to say of how the younger sister of um shoko of the girlman character how she took pictures of the dead just to kind of symbolize of what it feels to be dead of what the older sister always imagined herself doing yeah so that's very beautiful and very symbolic mm -hmm. of how she knew of how her sister felt so it's very beautiful of how that is to show what one person could feel like and try to symbolize like hey this is what death really is don't ever feel like that because you're much better than that you're a person that it's, should it's, live it's to show you the ugly side of death and like how it's gonna look ugly and i don't want you to ever do this in real life and then but there's there's plenty of reasons and there's actually a lot of reasons of why people would have the thought of their mind where maybe it's the world will be better where i don't oh exist. yeah that's very understandable and we um we, life is hard so everybody have, have had those thoughts no matter what but at the end of the day we have to continue living enjoy our life to the fullest and see what we can make the best of it so I really, I really enjoyed this film. I didn't connect as much as you did and cry, but I did almost tear um, twice. So that's really something because I did hold myself back. I, you know, I was blinking like I'm a man. It's a, it's so a, it's a very teary uh, movie because it really does touches. Oh yeah, a lot either in like so stressful moments. And really can relate to bullied, it too. Bullied moments when they're kids or bullied now. But yeah, I encourage people to watch this movie. If definitely. you haven't seen this film yet, please yeah, go out right. and watch it. It's out on Blu-ray for the U.S. already, finally after three years? Yeah, three, four years. About three, four years. So if you haven't watched this film, please go watch it. Go in theaters and watch it. So because I really enjoyed this film. If you haven't seen this film, comment down below your thoughts about this film. Tell us what are your favorite scenes, your favorite characters, what and how could you relate to it as well. We want to hear your thoughts about it. Other than that, guys, like the video, subscribe as well, follow us on social medias, tell us what other films we should also watch and review as well on the channel. Other than that, guys, thank you very much. See you next time on the next movie review. Peace.